Hello everyone, Earl Henderson, Primordial Defense. Thank you for watching. I have another Monday quarterback video for you. I'm going to play this video and talk about things that are going on. I better explain what's going on. And talk about things that I think that are being done right and or done wrong. Here we go. I'm Assistant Chief Wyatt Martin of the Houston Police Department. This critical incident briefing is intended to provide you with information about an officer-involved shooting that occurred in Houston on August 28, 2022. You're about to see video footage that is related to this incident. HPD conducts thorough investigations into officer-involved shootings. These typically require investigators to interview multiple witnesses, view numerous hours of video footage, and analyze a significant amount of forensic evidence. It is important to note that we are in the very early stages of the investigation, and we continue to review additional evidence as it is collected and analyzed. The videos you're about to see can be graphic and may be difficult to watch. These videos may also contain strong language. Viewer discretion is advised. At approximately 1.15 a.m., a Houston police officer assigned to the South Gessner Division responded to a shots fired call on Dunlap Street. Upon arrival, the officer found HFD responding to a house fire. Witnesses on the scene stated a male dressed in dark clothing, later identified as Roy Craven Jr., was carrying a shotgun and shooting at people. The officer located Mr. Craven lying prone on the ground at 5757 Holly Street, across the street from the burning residence. The officer gave Mr. Craven verbal commands to show me your hands and put it down. The suspect pointed his shotgun at the officer who discharged his duty weapon towards Mr. Craven, striking him. Mr. Craven was declared deceased at the scene. Two victims of Mr. Craven's gunfire were found deceased at the residence. Four additional victims were transported to the hospital where one later died. No officers were injured. Some guy with a shotgun out here. All right. <clears throat> Don't go into a call where you know there's been gunplay and you don't get a long gun out. That's wrong. Wrong, 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 fucking wrong. If you know you're going to a gunfight, bring a rifle and bring your friends with rifles. This is my biggest complaint when it comes to these videos. Officers responding to gun calls and they neglect to get their rifles out. A rifle is better than a pistol. It is more accurate and it's terminal ballistics are a night and day difference compared to pistol. The rifle has a longer barrel. There's more points of contact on it to reduce the amount of movement in the overall system so that it is more accurate. Whereas a pistol, very short barrel, only two points of contact, the littlest amount of movement can throw your shot placement way off. A rifle cartridge, it dumps so much kinetic energy into the target it can very rapidly incapacitate it it can take fewer rounds of rifle cartridge to incapacitate a threat it can take one to three rounds center mass to rapidly incapacitate someone a pistol it could take five to ten rounds of pistol center mass before that person becomes incapac physically incapacitated rifles just dominate they end fights quicker but Unfortunately, time after time, we see so many officers go to these gun calls and they don't get the rifles out. That, to me, is a training problem. I don't think that there are good trainers out there, and I don't think that there is realistic training being done with rifle. So, long story short, this officer needs to have a rifle out. Hey, 
Fernandez. Do y'all have a description of the guy with the shotgun? Show me your hands. Show me your hands. Put it down. Put it down. Get down. Shots fired. 17, 39. So we've got one nail down. I'm on Holly. Don't move! He's right here on the ground. Do not move! Coming up. Do not reach for that gun! You will be shot! You don't understand! Hey, come on, come on, come on. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hands. All right, go no hands. hands. He's got a knife. There's a knife in that pocket. I see it, I see it. You see it? Yeah. I couldn't find him. He was laying down right there. And then he pointed the shotgun at me. <laughs> All right, where's your shot Oh, this is so fucking annoying. My computer has been lagging like a motherfucker. Mills, where you at? Where's he at, Mills? Okay. Alright, I'm on you. Do not move! Do not reach for that firearm! Do not move! Do not reach for that gun! You will be shot! Do you understand? 
Hey, come on. Go, go with him. Go with him. Go with him. Go with him. Slow down. Slow down. Slow down. Slow down. Hands. Alright. Hands. Go hands. Slow down. Slow down. Hands. Alright. What the fuck is this dude? Hands. Go hands. Who the fuck teaches this grip? <laughs> God damn. Oh, man. There is some sloppy-ass gun handling that goes on with some police officers, and it's just downright fucking sickening. This grip is not taught anywhere. This makes no fucking sense. He's <laughs> got a knife. It's a knife in that pocket. I see, I see. All right, so we'll talk about the uh, stuff. Um, it's great that, you know, he's wanting to put a tourniquet on this dude, whatever. Um, there's blood on this guy, and he needs to be wearing gloves. I think that even before, even before cuffing the guy, he should have put gloves on. Uh, you have to assume that people have the worst disease ever. Like, you have to assume they got something worse than AIDS. Especially when it comes to criminals. Especially when it comes to people who have acted in a way that caused them to get shot by the police. If someone has done that, then that's probably a pretty good indication that they have probably done other things in life on multiple times that did not involve good decision making. And so they could have had higher chances of instances where they could have been having unprotected sex with prostitutes, uh, drug addicts, uh, sharing needles, whatever. You have to wear gloves to protect yourself and your family. You don't want to bring this shit home with you. It, it will change your life. It will. If you've got a, you know, a, a boyfriend, girlfriend at home um, and you get AIDS or HIV, hepatitis, do you, do you think they're going to stay in a relationship with you? If you're married and you haven't had kids yet, but you want to have kids, you get HIV. Do you think your partner is going to have unprotected sex with you in order to have a kid? Probably not. It's life altering, literally. So don't take risks. Always glove up. If it takes you two minutes to put gloves on and that person's laying there bleeding out, you can see the arterial blood squirting out of them. Then I guess they're going to have to wait two minutes in order for you to get those gloves on. You don't want to take the chance on getting anything. So you've got to wear gloves. Yes, it's also 
Hey. Mills, where you at? Where you at, Mills? Hey, we're coming! Uh, hey, we're coming! Hold here, hold here. Do not move. Do not reach for that gun. You will be shot. Do you understand? Go, go with them. Go with them. Go with them. Go with them. Slow down. Slow down. Slow down. Slow down. Hands. Bring hands. Go hands. He's got a knife. Where's it? Pocket. I see it. I see it. You shoot him? Yeah. Couldn't find him. <laughs> That's for sure. I like that response. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Check on the right there. Uh -oh. <laughs> and then he pointed the shotgun at me. Fuck. Alright, where's he shot at? Where's he shooting at? You want me to came out on the other side? No, man. Okay, you can just arrive. Let me check you, let me check you. You good? Alright, so he is checking this guy out, see if he has any gun holes in him. Um, bullet holes in him. Uh, this is something that needs to be done after a self-defense shooting. Once you have fought, we follow the fast protocol. Fast. F is for fight. Which is shooting, right? After you fought someone, you assess them. Do I need to shoot this person anymore? Then you scan. Is this person with someone else? Do they need to be shot too? And then T, there's multiple T's in fast. The first T is top off. Get that gun, a fresh magazine, so that if you have to fight some more, you get to start that fight off with a fresh, brand new mag versus a partially depleted mag. Then it's take cover, treat injuries, and talk. So if you're by yourself, once you top off and, you know, if you need to take cover, take cover, Start patting yourself down. See if you're bleeding. Because you may not feel it. There have been lots of people who've been shot and they did not know they were shot. There have been lots of people who've been stabbed in a fight and they just thought the other person was punching them. So you can take both hands, run them down one leg, Look at your hands, no blood, do the next leg. Run both hands down it, pull your hands, look at them, see if there's blood, nothing, cool. When it comes to your arms, obviously, you know, one arm, uh, I'm sorry, one hand, you're going to feel on that one arm, go up on the armpit area, start there, go around the bicep, go down along the, the forearm, you're going to kind of have to do some, some like, you know, massage rubbing looking kind of uh, swiping motions because you're just not able to take your whole hand and make it wrap all the way around that limb and check for it. So you have to do a couple swipes. Pull your hand away, look for blood. Do your other limb the same way. Run your hand around your neck, your hands around your neck, and then your hands over the top of your head, down over your face, check for blood. Your chest, you know, if you got an outer vest, you can stick your hands in through the side, feel along the vest, go down to the belly, and if you need to, you can undo the Velcro on one side. Really get a good feel right there. Pull your hand back. Look for blood. Press down your pelvic area. Do a cup check. Look at your hand. See if you see blood. Now, if there's someone else there with you, they can obviously um, 
look at you in a way that you can't look at yourself. <laughs> um, so they can do a visual check and then they can also take both their hands and run them up each extremity and then pat you down on your thoracic cavity and uh, look at your head and see if there's any blood coming out. It's very important to check yourself and check other people who've been involved in a gunfight because you they may not have registered the pain yet. They may not know that they've been shot. All right, so let's go back to the very, very beginning of this. So as I said, I should have had rifles out. Now at this point, while he is searching around and looking over here, his back is to that guy. Boom. He's right there. If that dude wanted to, he could pop that officer in the back from there. This fucking lagging shit is pissing me the fuck off. So this this line right here is kind of a darkened area anyway. So he does not immediately recognize that that's a person laying there. But it piques his interest enough like I'm sure he's thinking his head, what the fuck is that? Is that a person? Show me your hands! Then it becomes clear as he gets closer, it's a person. Now, one thing um, to think about, like I said, his back was to this guy the whole time. He could have shot his ass. As he got closer, that dude could have shot from there. Back us up a little bit more. So notice his light and notice these lights to the front of the building. And we have street light right here. Closer, closer, right Show me your hands! That Show me your hands! That weapon light's got pretty good brightness to it too. It's, put it down! Put it down! Your hands! This is what we call a photonic barrier where you have a lot of bright light shining towards you. This is why it is so important to have lights that have very high candela. So if we were to be able to revisit this scene and have these lights turned off, I guarantee you that the light that he would be shining right in there, it would be very, very, very clear that there's someone there. But these bright lights can fuck with your eyes. And if you don't have a light that is powerful enough to overcome that photonic barrier, you can lose stuff in the background. So you've got to have good lights. Good lights with very high candela. Now there's a difference between candela and lumen. Um, they are both a form of measurement of light, but they do it differently. Um, basically, candela power is how far that light will reach. And at that distance that it reach, um, the measurement of light, you know, how how bright is it at that distance. Um, lumens is just a measurement of the brightness of the light, its intensity from its source. So you click that light on, it's 100 lumens right there uh, from the source. Or 200 or 300 or 400. At a distance, you may not be getting that same 400 lumen of light at the beginning that's at the end. If you go measure at the end, it's not going to be 400 lumens. 
the candela is what really matters when it comes to choosing a light. You can have lights that have a very, very high lumen count, but their candela is not that great. So the candela is what you need to be looking at. And at a distance, you, you want that candela power because uh, that's going to go, that's going to overcome photonic barriers. Uh, when it comes to longer distances outside, you're going to be able to have a tighter beam on that and see things in good clarity. Let's say he was further back. A light might be able to reach far enough to kind of see the shadowy figure, but you're not going to get positive identification. All you're going to know is there's possibly a person back there. You might not be able to see any details about what's in their hand or anything like that. But if you get a good light with really good candela, you can. So um, you got to have good, good equipment. And good equipment does not come cheap. Um, Surefire, Streamlight, Modlight, and Cloud Defensive are four companies that I recommend when it comes to lights. These other companies that have cheaper lights, um, I, there's a reason why you do not see those being used by industry professionals. That's why you do not see your special operations community using these cheaper lights. There's a reason why the special operations community within the military uses Surefire lights. There is a fucking reason. Because they work under extreme conditions. There's a reason why, for example, the company Olight does not have contracts with the Navy SEALs and Delta Force. No, well, not them specifically, but, you know, uh, the Department of Defense, uh, Special Operations. That's why they don't have the contract to supply lights to them. That's why you don't see major metropolitan SWAT teams using products like that. They just don't have the reputation of working in extreme conditions or working that well. Yeah, they might have a, they might be bright as fuck and cheap in price, but can you drop that thing multiple times and it still work? Can you fire a thousand rounds with that thing attached to a gun and then it still work? So you're going to have to, if, if, if this stuff is not offered to you, you're going to have to spend some money to get it. Surefire is not cheap at all which is why most police agencies you see out there are rocking streamlights because they are cheaper than surefire but streamlight is still a, a good brand i could spend uh, a whole video on talking about lights but just know that uh, candela means more than lumen and you need high candela and there's only four brands that I recommend. Surefire, Streamlight, uh, Modlight, and Cloud Defensive. Anything else? It is not duty grade equipment. It is not life safety equipment. It's just a toy. All right. So um, he obviously goes from what the hell is this to oh shit that's a fucking person. And he gets his gun out and points it at him. Show me your hands. Put it down. Put it down. Then he comes a deadly threat. But the officer is still retaining his handheld light in his support hand. So what does that mean? That means that he is basically now shooting that gun one-handed. And when it comes to a handgun, you only get two points of contact. Your dominant hand and your non-dominant hand. You get a good solid two-handed grip, that improves your accuracy. When you basically just go to a one-handed grip, you could say that slashes your accuracy in half. So he does not have a good grip on the gun. And because the way that light is pointed, that's not good use of that light. He's now lighting up the ground in front of him. 
That light could be pointing at his dick. Why does he need to illuminate his dick at this moment? He does it. So the best thing that he could have done right then and there, as soon as this thing was a threat, was jettison that light out of his left hand. Just drop it right then and there. It is not crucial to him anymore. And get a good, solid two-handed grip on that pistol. And start shooting. That's what I think he should have done. That's what I recommend. Um, when it comes to low light training, um, you should be training for that. You should be practicing that. You should be, and not just low light, but also daytime stuff. You should be practicing having to let go of things that are in your hands that are not going to help you in that fight. Whether it be a, uh, a water bottle, um, a clipboard, an ink pen, a notepad, a set of keys, a flashlight. None of that shit's going to help you in a gunfight. So some of your drills need to be starting out with you holding stupid shit in your hands. A set of keys. Like if you got some keys that don't go to anything anymore, get those keys, put them on a key ring, paint them blue if you want to, and use that as a training prop. Um flashlights you can get the red man flashlight just the big rubber thing that looks like a, a flashlight kind of like you can get the you know the red man or the blue man guns that it looks like a gun shaped just one to one like it but it's just a, a chunk of rubber you can get those or um when you get new lights keep the old ones if a light breaks keep it Wrap some blue tape around it or paint it blue. Use it as a training prop. And then when it comes to your firearms training, pull that prop box out and do some some uh, jettison drills where you jettison unnecessary shit out of your hands for the fight. If the flashlight works, then that's even better for low light because then you can get that flashlight moved around and, and actually illuminate stuff with it. Do your scanning and then boom, when the fight command comes, you fucking drop that damn thing out of your hand and get a good two-handed grip on the gun. Get down! So he, sh the guy was in a prone position. He fires multiple times and then the dude gets up. Get down! He fires some more and the guy finally falls down. If he had had a good two-handed grip on that gun, would he have had to have fired that many rounds? And would he have been more accurate and completely prevented that guy from ever getting up in the first place? I don't know for sure, but I think the chances of it would have been higher. I think he would have had higher chances, higher likelihood of being more accurate with a good two-handed grip, and would have punched that dude's fucking time clock while he was still laying on the ground with that gun. Dude never would have been able to get up. That's just my belief. I, there's no way for me to prove that or anything. It's just my belief. The guy had a shotgun. That's a long gun. Now, I don't know what he had in it. He could have had birdshot. And even at this distance, birdshot still, it's not going to be nice. It's not going to be good. But if he had buckshot or slug in that damn thing... It would not have been good for the officer. Would not have been good at all. Get down! Shots fired. 17, 30 nights. I've got one nail down. So then he decides to put that light away and go to a good two handed grip on the gun. I'm on Holly. Don't move! Uh, not much else to talk about. If you like what you hear and see, go ahead and give me a like and a share. Oh, um, uh, I haven't brought up an article for this, so. I don't know much about this. All right. We'll continue on with that. Yeah. Uh, if you like what you hear and see, go ahead and give me a like and a share. If you have not already, hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more Monday quarterback videos.
Earl Henderson, Primordial Defense, thank you for watching.